so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Penises, baby. I am your host, Michael fucking Rainey, here with Cal Donjala. Hey, Lil Peen. <laughs> Jacob and Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons, wet, wild, and uh, getting moist by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him squishing around over there in that seat. I'm teasing. This is a little stinger. It's not little penises. <laughs> fuck but what, fuck what you heard. wet and juicy. Yes, that is a fact. Uh, boys, how are you? I am good. I am good. How are you? You look good. I feel good. Uh, and I'm ready to fuck. I'm teasing. Uh, I'm riled up just because uh, I just had a filet of fish and a double cheeseburger. Oh, my word. Yeah. Oh, my. All that McDonald's talk during the stinker news got me hot and horny. And fortunately, my wife was out, so I texted her. And, oh. And a uh, lovely lady, man. You were placing an Uber Eats order to your wife as we were doing the podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. You little stinker. Yeah. That's next level, Mike. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, man. I love it now. I feel good. I'm uh, ready to talk murder. I was asking you guys if we still had that it's murder soundbite on our yeah. soundboard, and I wish we did because there would be a moment where it really comes into play tonight. Oh, no. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'll just say it. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on my jaw. All right, thank you. you. Yeah. Did you guys know Donald Duck turned 90 this week? I did not. He did. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> But yeah, old. he's he's getting up there, man, and uh, looks good. Uh, probably clean a bill of health. Are these written down somewhere? No, yeah. <laughs> this is off the top of my dome. Wow, it's like eight mile. Uh, speaking of eight mile, why don't you flip that coin and see if we're gonna do an Impractical Jokers episode tonight or talk murder? You sure you don't have any more Donald Duck facts? If I think of it, I'll tell you. I did, okay. I, dude. I went to Washington this week with my daughter. It's now or oh, never dude, for the yeah. duck stuff to go see uh, Caitlin Clark play, and we were walking uh, by the Lincoln Memorial. What are they, what do they call that water there? The uh, reflecting pool. Yeah, yeah, where Forrest Gump was swimming. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but we were uh, we were walking through there, and there were ducks in the water, and uh, I didn't say it, but I thought uh, uh, Mallard Fillmore. I like mm, that. That's good. I would have said that. Yeah, yeah. you should have. I know. Okay, well, here we go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. The armed guards would have got him. As we just learned from the live uh, Stinkers News that we just did, which you can watch on Patreon if you'd like to see, uh, I was informed that I had not realized uh, our our soon-to-be friend, Sal, of the Impractical Jokers, Sat in the same seat that I did on Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. So that really warms my heart. Wow. Yeah. And I'd like to talk about it more. So hopefully I win the toss. <sighs> Not today. You're going to like this one, though. Uh, Jake actually brought him up a couple weeks ago. Who? Uh, who's this? The wrestler Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We're doing H.H. H. Holmes, Yeah, H.H. Huh? H. Holmes, baby. Um, all right, so this book, somebody recommended it before for the uh, Stinkers Book Club. Yeah. And I decided against it because uh, like two-thirds of it is about the, the World's Fair. So I figured it might be too dense, but there is... Okay, that's Chicago, the White City, Devil in the White City is about him in Chicago? Yes. Okay. And uh, But I would like to like read it with everyone because I think it is interesting enough and adds significant amount of context to it. Now, this one, this book, I just got today, so I wasn't able to delve into it, but uh, this one seems like uh, the definitive uh, tomb on H.H. Holmes. So I really want to dig into this, and he seems like somebody that we can get a few episodes out of. Mm -hmm. So tonight, I'd like to give you a generalized overview in addition to some very uh, salacious details. A little H.H. Holmes 101 for us. Yeah, to my favorite H.H. homosexuals. Well... Somebody else that you might be talking to. I was pointing yeah. to the man wrapped in plastic okay. bag behind you. Uh, but very interesting books, man. And uh, just a real nasty motherfucker, Jake. Can't wait to learn more about him. Creative. Yeah. And I've seen him described as a genius, but then I've, I've also read quotes from various classmates of his that described his him as dumb as shit. <laughs> so. Okay. Maybe it was an act. Yeah. I feel like I've confused a lot of this man's information with um, D.B. Cooper. 
It's the double initial. Yeah. That has confused does get me. you. So this guy, mostly known for murders. Yes. Yeah, and not scamming like, as well. Not like robbing a bank and disappearing. No. no. Okay. Cooper was the one in the plane. Yeah. Okay. So this guy's just a bad boy. He's just a bad a real killer. nasty ass. Okay. But he, well, he was a doctor. Like, he was a legitimate doctor, graduated from medical school. Really? So, pretty interesting fellow. I'm not giving anything away if I say he is, it's an old, he's an old serial killer. So, he's no longer with us. Mm, not uh, modern, I suppose. No, not modern. No. And he's buried in an unmarked grave. Holy Cross. Right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they actually, they dug him up and uh, just to test for DNA. But from what I understand, they reburied him in that spot. And is that in Philadelphia or Delaware Yaden. County? Delaware yeah. County. Yeah. Dude, it's like 15 minutes from here. Wow. I used to drive by it every day on my way to work. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, man. I, w- I want to uh, see if I could find out where it was because it seems as though the grave was unmarked, but there's got to be video footage of where they're digging to bring that up. Right. In 2017, yeah. I think it was. Mm, there's a way. Yeah. Wow. You we'll better get the believe it. it. Yeah. H.H. H. Holmes, Jake. Uh-huh. Uh, born in Gilmanton, New Hampshire. Have you ever been there? Never. New Hampshire seems like a, okay. a lovely place. I've driven through the little stretch of 95 between Massachusetts and What were you Maine. doing? Looking for a goddamn Taco Bell? I was lost on the way from a Taco Bell <laughs> to a different Taco Bell. I'm glad you found your way. <laughs> I did not intend for that voice to come out, but... I like it, right? I'm the words to it. had other plans. <laughs> but yeah, born in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, Jake, uh, May 16th, 1861. Older fella. Yeah. <laughs> 163 years old, man. Um, there's going to be some funny names uh, throughout this telling. So I just want you to keep that in mind and don't go busting your nuts over the first funny name that comes out. I'm interested in hearing what his H's are. My nuts are already busted. You're going to like it. All right. So uh, his, Jake, uh, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. His real name, his birth name was Herman Webster Mudgett. <laughs> <laughs> yes, All right, dude. we're starting off pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. So, the Mudget clan. Yeah, you get why they switched it up on him. <laughs> oh, my God. Our fucking, the Mudgets are in our church pews. <laughs> uh, yeah, Herman Webster Mudget, which I've seen various reports saying that he's anywhere between 5'5 five five and 5'8, five so a smaller gentleman. Okay, That's a unfortunate. Little, a little Mudget. Yeah, a little Mudget. You want to give him a little, yeah. little tickle? He ain't a Mudget, he's a Mudget. I like that. Yeah. That does sound like a Harry Potter little motherfucker. <laughs> that should be the word for guys under 5'9". Mudgets. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that. We're going to go with that. All right. You, heard, you fucking pieces of shit try to steal us. Jeff, what don't you like about it? Because I'm under 5'9". All right. Yeah. Well, you're a fucking mudget, man. You're a wet, shit. juicy mudget. Face it, <laughs> Look yourself in the fucking mirror. <laughs> wet, I am a wet, juicy mudget. Yeah. And my wife love it. Yeah. <laughs> for a limited time only at Arby's. Wet and juicy mudgets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let me get a uh, uh, six pack. Should we get 12 or should we get six? We're, we're, we're going to stick with the original six pack of wet and juicy mudgets. Um, yeah, Jake. You want mudget sauce with that? <laughs> Doesn't it already come with mudget sauce? It's extra. <laughs> yeah, man. So. Fucking Herman Webster Mudgett was his birth name. Okay. Real piece of shit. <laughs> Levi Horton Mudgett was his dad's name. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. These are all fucking Dr. Seuss books. Dude, yeah. his mother was Theodate Page Price. At least a little bit cooler. Yeah. Yeah, and Page and Price are on the normal Page side. Page Price sounds like a porn star. Theodate. Well, yeah. Theodate sounds like an app for fucking Cosby children. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy Theo <laughs> Date. <laughs> that was great, man. Wow. Have you been practicing that? Nah, it's just a Rudy and the Theo Date is all I can do. That is really Where good. Did John though. go. <laughs> Dude, every now and again, you gotta hit a good Rudy. Yeah. Jake, hit it. Rudy. Rudy. Oh, <laughs> you guys got two different ends of the Whoa. Cosby yeah. spectrum, Whoa. but very impressive on both ends. Jamie, can you get us some pudding? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Theodate was his mother's name. And uh, in pictures, he presents as a handsome guy. However, uh, he had one lazy eye. And it seems as though they were beautiful blue eyes that, came, that crossed up on him. Mm-hmm. You know a thing or two about that. I do. I know. So I feel as though I'm sitting right next to H.H. H. Holmes right now. Well, I hope we don't get too scaled. Oh, no, don't do it to him, John. 
<laughs> this is a bummer. He had an alcoholic dad. They were strict Methodists, Jake. Okay. Had an alcoholic dad who would get hammered and scream Bible verses. Oof. And he had a cold, distant mother. Impressive that you can recite the Bible when you're blacked out. I don't know that he was correct in what he was okay, screaming. Because I can't even remember the lyrics to my favorite songs after like eight beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder if there was any kind of like test. Like if he would like come home and his wife's like, you've been drinking again, <laughs> fucking Hermit. Or whatever. What did I say his fucking name was? Levi? Le- you've yeah. been drinking, Levi. He's like, if I was drinking, would I be able to say, yea, though I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. All right, but I don't want to hear any more fuss than out of you. A mudget knows a Tim's. I like that, Jake. When you hear the name Mudget, is there anybody that pops into your brain that you think should be named Mudget? No, I don't like punching down on those people, you know? <laughs> How was you going to hit them? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's mudge on. All right. Um, his dad had a very unique way of getting he and his siblings to shut the fuck up. How do you think he did it? Well, if it was unique, it doesn't sound like it was a belt or a wooden spoon. Um, he would make them French kiss. <laughs> <laughs> That'll shut you up. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. You going to go French kiss, Jake? <laughs> Yeah, I want to go with French kiss as well. He would so y'all gonna mudge kiss. <laughs> uh, that's where you gotta touch lips and finger your own asshole. What are you doing? Mudge it out. <laughs> he would soak rags in kerosene and make them huff kerosene to chill them the fuck out. Oh my god. Okay. It's called <clears throat> backwoods Benadryl, Jake. It's called poison. <laughs> yeah. Poisoning your children. It's sleepy man. All right, so that's that's gonna pro- potentially lead to some head injury. Uh, brain stuff for our old friend Mudge. And also, this was not good. He would lock him in the basement for hours on end. I'm sorry, lock, lock him in the attic for hours on end. Uh, Left to his own devices. You still stomp around up there, you know? Make, I don't make know. Make even man. more noise. I don't know, but if you got a, a drinking-ass Methodist father, do you really want to be stomping around the attic? Probably not. No. Keep this in the basement. I would too, Jake. Now, he was uh, when he was let out, he would go into the forest. They were wealthy, by the way. I should add that. Hmm. When he was let out, he would wander around in the forest and he would torture animals. Oh. He would. Got a lot of wildlife up there. Uh, I've heard that he would perform surgery on living rabbits and dogs. Like neighborhood dogs? Just out and, out and about. And what kind of surgery is, is he pro- doing? Removing a cyst? What if he was fixing them? Did any of them live? Probably not. Well, I don't think he was fixing them. I don't know. Well, it's trial and error at that point. I mean, this is the late 19th century. I mean, how much could a doctor know at that point? True. They were leeching people still. Yeah. I'm Um, sorry. I was mistaken. (coughs) There's not a devil in your dog. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny you mention that because... I was just insides (laughs) like the last dog. Jake, it's nuts you mention that because H.H. Holmes says, I was born with the devil in me. Whoa. Pretty cool thing to say. That is cool. Yeah. He says, I could not help that I was a murderer no more than the poet can help the inspiration to sing. Damn. That does not make any sense. So he's no, but it still sounds spot. poetic. It does. But he would I love TRL. <laughs> but I do love I was born with the devil in me. Yeah. I. It wasn't going to come in time, but I was going to build a paper mache H.H. H. Holmes, and I was going to dress in a spandex devil outfit. And connect him uh, no. to a penis and have him hanging off of me the entire episode. Yeah, it did sound crazy sus when he said that. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a nice el- el- effigy for him. I would have liked to do that to him. Yeah. I can still do it because there's more episodes I want to do on this because I still have to read uh, the rest of Devil in the White City and uh, the true history of the White City Devil. Yeah, you got uh, all the time in the world to learn paper mache Oh, man. Could you imagine how angry he's going to be in heaven? Who? HH. Going to be? Yeah. You think he's going to heaven? I think he's in heaven, but he's going to be mad at me That's when, what I'm, one of the H's uh, when for. I'm butt-fucking his effigy. Going to effigy? <laughs> you want, hey, girl, gonna you F-H. want effigy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, Jake, goddamn, man. Hey, girl. <laughs> I'm done. 
So HH says that he developed a morbid fascination with the dead. One day he was walking home from school and a couple of neighborhood bullies picked him up and they dragged him into the neighborhood doctor's office. Now at the doctor's office, they had a real ass skeleton for reference there. Mm-hmm. And they brought him to the skeleton and made it touch him. Pretty fun middle school prank. Mm-hmm. I think it's that's a good summer prank. You you know summer pranks. I love summer pranks. That sounds like a great summer prank. Where's the doctor office employees in this situation is my question. Well, I the think- skeleton's just in the fucking waiting room. HH seems prone to tall tales, and judging by his history of fraud, I think there were often times where he was trying to paint himself as a sympathetic figure. Okay. So this could have been one of those times, but... Ew, a skeleton touched me. Yeah, this pervert's already cutting fucking tails off of dogs. Yeah, it doesn't seem that that gross compared to what he's already done to fucking woodland creatures. Where did you get that dog penis lay around your neck? (laughs) <laughs> he graduates high school when he's 16 and he finds work as a teacher imagine I have a 16 year old teacher Man. yeah Jake uh, what kind of things has 16 year olds taught you um, how to be a good person Mike I have no idea a 16 year old pass on top of that too um, he gets a job All right, he's a teacher for a little yeah. bit Jesus Christ he's really nervous about it. you were 16 once too you know he's sweating through his shorts man <laughs> well, Jake uh, brother it is hot in here. I can't think. It ain't that 16, what did I learn? Not self-control. That's the one thing I didn't learn. Okay. Well, um, we can start a list of things you didn't learn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Jake, not only was he a teacher for a while, but he gets a job as a elementary school principal. As, as, also as a teenager. 16? As a teenager. Wow. I think he's 17 by the time he becomes a principal. But he's 16 when he becomes a teenager. Dude. I mean, he's got to be in an area with less than a thousand people, right? The woods of New Hampshire yes. in this fucking time. Yeah. He's like a reverse Billy Madison at this point. Yeah. Going through yeah. all of the school district. You're going to love this. In 1878, he falls in love with a lady by the name of Clara Lovering. Okay. Clara Lovering. Lovering. That's like, a beautiful lady. Love ring like the apparatus that my father wears at the base of his penis to stay hard for my mother. Do you have a picture of that in your wallet by any chance? <laughs> I'm actually having uh, it commissioned uh, as an oil painting right now. Okay. I Acrylic. Can't, can't wait to see it. Well, you're going to taste it too. Jesus <laughs> I have a very close relationship with this artist. It's, just, it's a scratch and suck. <laughs> Yeah, man, fucking Clara Lovering. He goes to medical school at the University of Vermont. However, he decides that's not right for him. So he heads out to the University of Michigan to go to medical school there. Now, at the time, he also bilks Clara Lovering out of a lot of money because her family is wealthy as well. His family doesn't really fuck with him. So he's like, all right, I'm going to get mine some other way. Is this first kind of a f- instance of fraud then? It is. Okay. And when he gets to medical school, he uh, he gets the frog the frog bug. <laughs> he gets the fraud bug bug. When he was in the woods, he got the frog bug. I've Wait, been down what? in the bog with the frog bug too. <laughs> Here we go. I, I knew I was saying Beetlejuice three times. <laughs> but he got the frog bug and he got the fraud bug. So one thing that he does when he gets to medical school is he's like, all right. He's like, I can not only, I can steal cadavers, okay, but... I could also take out insurance policies on these people, make up fake names and be like, yeah, I have the body here and, and they'll pay it out. So he's known for collecting these bodies and he's also known for collecting body parts. And there is an instance where uh, this woman named uh, the landlady of the building that he lived in at the University of Michigan, her name was Mrs. Brew. She says one day she was doing some light cleaning around their living space and she smelled a terrible odor coming from H.H. Holmes' room. She went in there, and she saw a small figure under the bed. What do you think it was? I'm assuming a dead body. A dead baby. (sighs) He kept a goddamn dead baby under his bed. He didn't kill the baby. Probably not, but he just had it. Is it a crime to keep a dead baby, Jake? I don't know. Yes, yes, it is. I am pretty sure it is. She just told him, no more. We can't have it. Slap on the wrist. It sounds like he was pretty good about keeping that promise. Because I couldn't find any other instances where he was keeping dead babies like goddamn Little League trophies. 
He didn't start the world's first storage unit business. No, just to get his fucking lady off his <laughs> no. off his ass. Actually, I take back everything I ever said because one of his classmates said that he was caught stealing a child's foot. Now, what's he? He's not uh, <laughs> collecting life insurance policies off of body parts, right? You can't be like, "This is all that's left of my aunt Dorothy after the moose has got to her." No, so. A lot of times he was just fucking around with these corpses. He was still doing his own little medical research on his own kind of thing. He was. He would call them something fucked up. It was called like night trips or something where he would go out to fucking graveyards and just dig them up. There was another fellow who would do it with him. Apparently, like, you could get money for this kind of shit for selling these these bodies because I I wasn't really totally fucking around when I said earlier that, that being a doctor, people were just fucking guessing back then, but... There, there really was still a lot of experimentation going on because yeah. most of the times they would just try to fucking give you like a goddamn tonic or something because yeah. they had no idea what the fuck was wrong. So he could them. sell these bodies to somebody who is a doctor to and physicians, wants to learn yeah. more. Yes. So these doctors are buying black market dead bodies. Stolen dead bodies. I mean, at least they're trying to further their research. That's yeah. uh, commendable. Yeah, that is kind of nice. Yeah. Still very bizarre that like they couldn't go through the right fucking... Uh, systems to get their own but bodies I w- to do the research. On. I wonder if finances were an issue because Maybe. if you went through the the proper channels to get a dead body, it'd be like, all right, it's you know, hundred bucks. Yeah. Whereas if you oh, went so through, much fucking paperwork, you, you know, really think it was on their <laughs> radar back then too to like to even think to like take all these dead bodies and work on them. I think so because yeah. I mean, if they can develop a skill that no other doctor in the area yeah. has. They can convince mm-hmm. everybody that, hey, if you got this, come to me, and I'll handle yeah. it. Okay. Damn. I'm pretty happy to not have lived back then. Your guys are going to like this. And he's he's given a nickname for having a peculiar odor to himself. This is H.H. H. Holmes. Had a little funny smell to him. What do you think his classmates called him? Funky ass. H.H. H. Hormones. Smegma. Oh, my God. That ain't good. You got to cut the tip of your dick off, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with what's left? You know, the little skin around it. I hope it grows back. You're cut, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're smegmalous. No, I got smeg. Okay, you're not supposed to. No, smeg is pre- smegma's pre-cum. No, I thought smegma no. was the, like, belly button lint that gets caught in your foreskin when yes. you're not when you're not snipped it's pre-cum it's no way i do not believe that <laughs> he's searching it on your we are home computer all right what's it say wet and juicy with the information uh jake and john are right it is the the harmless combination of oils skin cells sweat and other fluids that come uh accumulate around your genitals accumulate all right <laughs> what is pre-cum Pre-cum, pre-cum, is pre-cum, you pre-cum. Before it's, you come, it's like a clear discharge. I know exactly what it You're is, Jake. I've tasted it. What it. is the term <laughs> for it? Okay. <laughs> it says it looks like crumbly cheese and usually has a foul odor. That's magma. Well, it's, can you Google what does pre-cum <laughs> taste like? Can you say like? medical right. word for pre-cum? What is that, Mike? You find it? I have not, man. It's, it's just listed as pre-cum. Pre-ejaculate, pre-cum. And that's on the this medical This fucks document. everything. I could have sworn for fucking decades now that smegma was <gasps> pre-cum. Oh, no, this for a, a long time. A I might need a break. You have not gotten a lot of uh, references to smegma then. Dude, smegma is like a, uh, a penis UTI. It's like toe jam of the dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a nice thing to talk about or say either. I'm just trying to describe it. In yeah. The- I mean, I'm not even trying to be funny by saying this, but I feel like a real fucking dickhead right now. <laughs> Mike, no. It's okay. It's all right. Now, looking back, how many people do you have to apologize for not <laughs> understanding what Smegma was? I don't think I'm wrong. There's got to be a way that I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> just watching him flip in real time. Yeah, you can... Sp- Keep spinning these plates, buddy. He's searching. <laughs> yeah, he is. All right, man. His fucking phone Fuck me, phone man. light is all it's, the way It's up. still dick funk. All right, can we agree on that? How many times are we at Lou Turks and you're like, oh, hold on, I got to go and wash this smegma off of me? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, <sighs> well, they were calling something some, something way more stinky than pre cum. It's even worse than you yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, sorry to disappoint you, but it's uh, even grosser. These kids were even grosser and funnier than you assumed. <laughs> that does make me feel a little bit better. So, Jake, in 1884, he graduates. In 1886, he moves to Chicago, all right? And that's where he takes on the name H.H. Holmes. Okay. Henry Howard Holmes. Uh, Did he make a practice of having a lot of aliases after this? Oh, dude, yeah, he did. There was one that really cracked me up, too. When he was uh, selling cadavers, one of the names that he would use was Rob Graves. All right. That's awesome. This might be pretty cool. <laughs> top five stinker seal of approvals. Hi, I'm um, Rob Graves. I got this body for you. <laughs> oh, dude. Totally legit. Comes with a certificate of authenticity. I, th- dude, I think in here they might have like a collection of his names, if you don't mind me. Oh, here we go. All right. Known aliases. All right. This is from H.H. H. Holmes, The True History of the White City Devil by Adam Selzer. Henry Howard Holmes, Hiram Campbell, Harry Gordon, Alexander Bond... Henry Howard, O.C. Pratt, H.M. Pratt, Alexander Cook, A.D. Laws, Rob Graves, George Howe, A.C. Hayes, H.A.P.'s, G.D. Hale, Mr. Hall, J.A. Judson, uh, C.D. Klutz, Mr. Belknap, Mr. Powell, Horace Williams, Waldo Bankhorn, (laughs) (laughs) Manfred Petzl, William C. Green, and H.W. Mischoff. So his H's, he changed, he dropped Herbert and went with Henry Howard. That's what HH stood for? Yes. Damn, man, he dropped Herbert. He went through and he no, went he, two other H's. He wasn't uh, fucking, uh, what did I say his fucking birth name was? Oh, God. Engelbert. Henry, Herman, Herman Webster. Yes, Mudgett. Herman. Herman yeah. Webster. Herman, not Herman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Herman yeah. Webster. Mudgett. So he dropped Herman. Yeah, he did. Two other H's. He names. dropped it like a bad habit. And picked up another bad. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's officially known as Henry Howard Holmes, Jake. Damn, he's like the old school Diddy. He is. Now, Jake. Puff Daddy. Uh. Diddy. Oh, no. Puff. D- oh, oh. Diddy Bot. Diddy Bot is back. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. God. Oh, no. You have been pre-selected for Freak Off, Jake. <laughs> oh, no. I, I got pre-selected anything. last week, man. I think oh, Is that John Del Calo? You have also been pre-selected <laughs> for Freak Off. I command the both of you to pull apart your cheeks and let me taste what you had for dinner last night. <laughs> oh, my God. I just had some mudge. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a pound of saltwater mudge. <laughs> well, it's funny you mention that because I have a hankering for mudge fudge. <laughs> <laughs> you threw him a fucking softball, dude. Uh, Diddy Bot is powered <laughs> by high octane freak oil. <laughs> but Jake, he gets to Chicago and he ends up working at a drugstore. Now, there's two different accounts that I've seen of what transpires next. One is that the guy who owns the drugstore, this fellow by the name of Dr. Horton and his wife Elizabeth. Uh Dr. Horton has cancer and Elizabeth is upset about what's going to come because she feels that her husband's on his way out. One account is that H.H. Holmes is able to convince her to allow him to take a life insurance policy out on her and that Dr. Horton eventually succumbs to cancer and that Mrs. Horton just goes missing. And when her family asks where she's at, he says that she just up and went to California because she said it was always a dream of hers. Wow. However, uh, in this book, one of the sections I did read said that that was a complete fabric- fabrication and that the Hortons were alive after H.H. H. Holmes was put to death. So oh. who knows what's true? Damn. Horton hears a huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Who? Horton do the whoop. <laughs> what did that Horton do? Jake, in 1887, he falls in love again. Now, granted, he's still married to his first right. It's right. Uh, Clara Lovering, who, like I stated, is the apparatus that's at the base of my father's penis so he can stay hard for my mother. Still married to Clara Lovering, he meets a lovely lady, lady by the name of Murda Belknap. <gasps> it's Murda. Yeah. I know. No I way. Yep. How's that spelled? M Y R T A. The only way she would have been more perfect if her, is if her last name was Dirtnap. <laughs> oh, that is lovely, man. <laughs> 
Yeah, so he fall, he's actually eventually married to three women at the same time. One was under his first original name to Clara. Clara Lovering, uh, Murda Belknap, and Georgiana Yoke. Did he uh, marry that lady under a different name as well, or did it just not matter? Because That's a great question. I don't know. Records didn't really. I don't know. He did try to divorce his first wife when he was attempting to marry his second wife. Uh-huh. And the cause that he gave for divorce was that the first wife was unfaith- unfaithful, which at the time was salacious. So, but they denied the divorce for some reason. Huh. In 1887, Jake, that's when he begins construction on his murder castle. Man. You found out something interesting about the current condition of the murder castle. Yeah. Remember what it is? Yeah, they tore it down and now it's just a post office. Yep. Is it a gigantic post office? No. Okay. I think it's just a normal. That was totally knocked down. A yeah. castle implies that it was fucking at least half of a city block in my mind. No, was it, it was it was like a three story house, a okay. large house. Okay, um, those houses do be having lots right, of rooms sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it was three yeah, story. Okay, so the bottom floor was retail space, which included the drugstore, and the top two spaces were apartments. And it seems as though there were around a hundred rooms in this fucking place. So are there s- are some of them like just closets. Dude, size? it's so fucked. Now there are. Different accounts saying what's accurate, what's not accurate. What What is indisputable is that it was a very fucked up place. May I ask one question? No, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead, John. <laughs> did he build this from the ground up or did he buy a place and then convert it into this maze no, of hell? He had it constructed. So he was okay. constantly working his life insurance scams. Also, too, a way that he ended up making a ton of money was obtaining items on credit and then selling them for cash. And then when the creditors would come, he'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't have this shit. Ooh. Wow. I might give that a try myself. <laughs> <laughs> so he had money to pay all these fucking contractors, all this money to create this building to his specifications. And he would offer fire them out of the blue so that nobody knew what the other was working on and that it was always a constant state of confusion. But, but he, he still paid. Not always. Okay. There would be times where guys came to collect pay and he'd point out work that he felt was shoddy, but the guys would do exactly what they had asked him to do. Right. Kind of something you don't want to... You don't want to have those guys come back and sniff around and be like, what the fuck did you add? Yeah, put up a giant yeah. inflatable rat outside of the murder <laughs> castle. That's the last thing any murderer needs, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, you're just hacking up a body and you look out the basement when you're like, what oh, the Jesus fuck, Christ, man? man? Get yeah. a fucking real job, guys. There's <laughs> <laughs> a guy taking a nap in a chair. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was he was constantly hiring people and they're creating all these rooms. And one of the diagrams I saw showed all these rooms partitioned. Now, he said it was going to be the Chicago World's Fair, which was coming in 1893. He said that was going to be the official hotel of the Chicago World's Fair. There's no indication that this place was ever used as a hotel during the World's Fair. It was there, uh-huh. but at the same time, it, it was never operational during the fair. He's claiming that's to the, to the contractors that he hired? Yeah. Okay. And oftentimes, he would do this, too, to get more uh, credit and get mm-hmm. loans to build this shit. Yeah. And he's a reputable guy. He really presents himself well. And one thing I read that really stuck with me and creeped me the fuck out but they said that ladies appreciated it because he was so handsome, was he would always touch too long and stare too long and stand too close. Mm, a little bit of a... appreciate that, huh? He was riding with Biden all the way back then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you tell me what her hair has tasted like? <laughs> I like that one. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I hate all these old dickheads so much, man. Um... But yeah, there were all these fucked up rooms being built and they were there was a ton of space, but at the same time, these rooms would be broken up so that they were super small. There would be fucking staircases leading to nowhere. Mm-hmm. There would be fucking brick walls. There were fucking mazes. This cracked me up. There were greased chutes in the house that led to the basement. There would be trap doors and these chutes would be greased with axle grease. This is like actual, like, shoots and ladders the building. It's a house of horrors, man. Yeah. yeah a literal house of horrors, man. They took the same blueprints, and that's what they use in Home Alone 2. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, did they really? <laughs> unfortunately, Jake, there was a lot of red prints because he collect, he committed a lot of murder down there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, man. Ooh, baby. Oh. Sometimes I get so close, man. Uh, Look at all this yeah. murder. You murdered that punchline. It was perfect. <laughs> What else could have come out of your mouth? That's yeah. the only reason. I'm I know. Say. I know. <laughs> a lot of red print. I know, man. I feel like I have two clumsy Italian bakers in my mouth at all times, <laughs> carrying a gigantic wedding cake, and they can never just deliver it out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Another fucked up thing about the murder castle was that in some of the rooms, there would be gas lines. And at his will, he could just turn on the gas to just fuck these people up. Now, people would stay there, even though it wasn't operational during the Chicago World's Fair. People would come in. He would place personal ads for women to, to work at the hotel. And one of the conditions of employment was that he would ask these prospective employees if they would sign off on him being the beneficiary of a life insurance policy. Oh, my God. And I think a lot of times people would just be so desperate for employment. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, what does that even fucking mean? Of course you can do that. And there was one lady, I think she was, like, applying for a job as a housekeeper. And when he was giving her the spiel, she's like, I was already uneasy about it, but then he said something which really made me get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. And he said, just so you know, you have nothing to fear with me. Now, please just follow me down this dark stairwell. But the basement was the most fucked up place. So there were all these fucking chutes and ladders and fucking trap doors and fucking brick walls that led to nowhere. Oh, one other thing I want to add is he got this uh, gigantic uh, vault and it was thousands of dollars. And eventually he didn't make payments on it. So the company that gave it to him on credit came to repo it. But he had built a smaller room around the vault <laughs> so they could not get so in. So funny. Just, Jesus, it's so funny. Yeah, go ahead and get it if you can. <laughs> and that's what he told them. And they were just like, we just can't get this fucking thing out. And that has to be the most expensive thing that company sells, right? Like It was a walk-in, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn, this is a... And is, he has not murdered anybody yet, right? To well, our knowledge. That's up for debate. So far, he's a fucking prankster and a fraudster. Yeah, kills animals. Killed animals, exhumed bodies illegally. Rob Graves. He and pranks are uh, over overweighing all that stuff yeah. so far. He ends up admitting to 27 murders. Judging by all the loose ends that are relatively tied to him, it's conceivable that he committed over a couple hundred murders. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, can. <laughs> <laughs> You listen to Little Singers Podcast, the only podcast by and for. <laughs> the basement is the true uh, horrific <gasps> place in this house of horrors, Jake. Okay. So in the basement, there are operating room tables. There's a crematory. There are acid pits. There's a torture rack. Jesus. So you did not want to end up in the basement. If anything, you would prefer to be in a room where he just flicked on the gas. Because you're out, baby. Yeah, take me to the operating room once I'm already in heaven, baby. You think he, when he gives tours of the place, he, he pawns it off as like a uh, in-house gym for anyone staying there. Oh, we got the uh, torture rack ab roller and uh, <laughs> the acid bath cool down. Sauna. Yeah, yeah. Or cool down, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better, right? It's like, you guys have seen uh, FDR and those <laughs> things and the monkeys that look relaxed. You've seen those guys, right? You're going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're also members. Yeah, in about 30 years, you're going to see all that. Uh, but enough people go missing from this fucking place, and there's enough life insurance policies to get cashed out to him that it starts raising a lot of red flags. So private detectives start coming through there, and they're asking so many questions. Oh, I think where he really gets fucked up is when he's trying to buy arson insurance for the castle. Okay. After enough private investigators come through, where he's like, all right, I got to get the fuck out of here. So he takes off from Chicago to Texas. During the, Before that, he had several handymen that would fucking help him out with whatever. And he would often try to recruit different contractors that were building the fucking murder castle to help him kill people. There was one guy in uh, Devil in the White City where they mentioned, he's like, yeah, I was just going over fucking... Uh, fucking room layout with him and we could see down into the floor below us where there was another contractor working and H.H. H. Holmes was like I'll give you $50 if you drop this stone on his head right now whoa were they the only three people in there 
Like, it, he would have gotten away with it, or would have they just been like, oh, that was an accident? I don't know? know if there are other people in there at the time, and I'm sure people were so unsuspecting at that time, and there was so much buzz in the city about what was happening. Yeah. Because I think the Chicago fire had happened a few years prior, mm -hmm. and this was going to be just such a, a massive event. The fucking World's Fair is interesting enough where they had a, uh, it was the introduction of the Ferris wheel. Uh, Whoa. Wrigley's gum was introduced. Cracker Jack was introduced. Damn. Was a lot a of fucking fun wow. stuff. Um, do you think he was just feeling the guy out? Like, did that guy Could've not been, ever yeah. think anything weird about it until after he finds out who Holmes is later? No, he said he was weirded out enough okay. to where, like, he left and he never came back. Okay. But it is kind of something that you could just play off and be of like, course, yeah. of course I was fucking kidding, yeah. Right, yeah. Drop a stone on his fucking massive head. Yeah, that would kill him. Okay, dickhead. <laughs> but H.H. H. Holmes felt the heat enough uh, with all sensitivities due to anybody who was burned alive in this fucking house. Jake, he took off for Texas. He uh, burned his own place down? Well, no. He would fucking burn people alive in the uh, in the crematory in there. Okay. Yeah. So there were... Jesus Christ. Yeah. And one of the guys was this guy, fucking uh, Benjamin Peitzel, which was a handyman who followed him around the country. And uh, Benjamin Peitzel was arrested for stealing, uh, uh, stealing goods on the credit scam. And Peitzel had a wife and five kids. And eventually they ended up in Philly... And H.H. H. Holmes was in contact with Peitzel's wife. And he was like, look, just so you know, I'm going to take out a $10,000 insurance policy. And I think he promised her 6000 while she's alive. And look, just if anything ever happens to him, you get the rest like upon death. And, you know, we're just like, all right, yeah, sure, fine, cool, let's do it. So insane. It is insane. But, yeah, he ends up... Uh, I'm he kind of killed. an angel investor in your husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah my motherfucker's going to be an angel investor. <laughs> but uh, eventually he ends up killing Benjamin Peitzel. He, he knocks him out with chloroform, and then he sets him on fire while he's still alive. Oh, my God. Does that wake you up? I, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, out of the chloroform stupor? Um, it would make me want toast. Is that what you're asking me, Jake? Yes. All right, yes. <laughs> I thought I understood. Yeah, dry toast is might as well just eat nothing. Ugh. Are you a toast man, Jake? Oh, you know you know I stay toasting. What's your favorite kind of toast? All of them. <laughs> White toast. Yeah. Why do you say that so uh confidently, Jake? Because it's the best. Yeah. It's All right. What kind of toast do you like? I like rye and I like pumpernickel. Yeah, you're making a lot of pumpernickel toast at home? I'm not, but I wouldn't mind pumping her nickel into you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fried my ass. <laughs> it's all been worth it, Jake. <laughs> so he kills Peitzel, and then dude, it gets a thousand times worse, because now he's... Um, He's telling uh, Peitzel's wife that her husband's just on the run from his police. So he's traveling around the country with Mrs. Peitzel and her children. And eventually he takes, whole, takes control of three of her kids. And he's like, listen, I'll take the kids out. You know, we'll travel the country a little bit. I'll show them some new things. Yeah. Unfortunately, he ends up killing three of her kids. So the first kid. Oh, my God. All right. So he kills one of her, one of her kids, her son, in Indianapolis. And then he takes the two daughters. All right, he takes, he kills the son. Um, the kid ends up in a chimney. So I don't know if he sets him on fire, and that's just where his remains are, or what. But the two girls, he brings them up to Toronto, Canada, and he makes them get inside of a trunk, and he gases the trunk. Now there's, where, did, how did he get the wife away from the kids? mother he was convincing enough as to where he's like look i'll take the kids off your hands because five kids for just one lady but how do you come back you know what i mean but hey, without the kids I yeah i guess just saying like hey they're fine they're fucking at school or something oh, okay I, I know to us it sounds nuts yeah. because you're fuck we're fucking you know around our kids every fucking day and i think back yeah. then it was just different much easier to be like oh this guy's a doctor like i know how yeah. fucking even like you know, our parents' generation, if somebody said they were a doctor, you'd be like, yo, you better be on your fucking P's and Q's, you fucking moron. Because yeah. this guy's a fucking doctor. And I'll fucking cheat on your father with him if that's what it takes. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, now I get it. Mm-hmm. Now it all makes sense. Truly, thank you. There was once a man who came to my house, and I still can't explain this, and I got to ask my mother the background on this, but there was a guy, his name was Pat. He just showed up at my house one day. Now, my father, Jake, every three days, he would work a 24-hour shift at the firehouse, and this was one of those nights that he was working overnight. Nights. Yep. This guy, I don't, I don't know who this fucking guy was. It was one night out of my entire existence, this guy came over to my house, this guy, Pat. He showed up with, with a uh, bow, and he pulled it out, and he uh, was had me stand in my living room trying to pull it back, but I was a little guy, so like I couldn't pull the fucking bow back. But he just wanted to show me how strong Damn, he was. He was it. alpha dog and you with the bow. And I even asked my mom, I said, uh, where is he going to sleep tonight? And my sister was at my Aunt Pat's, and he's like, oh, he's going to sleep in your sister's room, which is even more fucking insane. Yikes. I got to ask her, man. Whoa, man. That's, yeah. Mike, that's huge. I hope not. <laughs> well, he never came back, you, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a good point. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. It's not even the kumquat hour. <laughs> We will be coming back to that later in the come quiet hour. I'll answer. I'll answer any. I, I'm an open book, unlike my mother, who is one of those diaries that has a lock on it. But guys, there's a detective in Philly named Frank Geyer, who's hot on H. H. Holmes's trail, and he's tracking him down and he's investigating. Eventually, he finds uh, the little boy's remains in Indianapolis, and he's able to figure out that H. H. Holmes then went to Toronto. And they find the kids' remains. And on November 17th, 1894, H.H. H. Holmes is arrested by Frank Geyer in Boston. Okay. He's arrested for the murder of Benjamin Peitzel. So that's what kicked this whole thing off. So eventually, initially they find Peitzel's remains, and then he's, at, he's able to track down his family's whereabouts, and then he tracks down the deceased kids. Man. And this is a Philadelphia... Detective, yes. who is traveling all across the yeah. fucking east side of the country yeah. and Canada. Yep. Uh, and like he worked for the city of Philadelphia. He is a Philadelphia detective. Yeah. yeah. So crazy. This is before the FBI. So, and he wasn't even like, was he working in conjunction with other um, police Not that I know. If he was on the road. Not wow. that I know. It's insane for a fucking guy to be able to do that. In the but like you mentioned, yeah. like, I, I don't know what government agencies were in effect at this time. I know they had the, the fucking, the, the Pinkerton mm-hmm. fucking uh, detectives or, or they're private, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know but I guess like that might be one of your only recourses outside of like, you know, a local investigative agency stalling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's able to track them down. Uh, they arrest them in Boston and initially, not even initially, but altogether, H.H. H. <gasps> Holmes is only tried for the murder of his lackey, Benjamin Peitzel. Okay. That's the only one. Yeah. Now, wow. between his arrest and his trial for murder, the murder castle burns down mysteriously. Did he have the policy out on I him? don't know, man. That, oh, that's a great question because that would be a fun way to, to have a come up. But he wasn't able to get to Chicago to do that, right? He was in no, custody. No, but what if he had somebody on the inside that was just, he's like, that's look, you got to burn this fucking place to the ground. I'll $10,000 to this, you know, or wh- however many dollars. This $20. guy knows what kind of remains they could have found there. That's wild. Now, the fucking basement... Um, if you go to the fucking post office, the basement is still accessible. I wonder in like what condition it was relative to that time period. There'd still be um, bones left, right? I don't in know, the man. Uh, fire ra- ra- wreckage? Um, unless there was a bone thief about. And we know about bone these bones. Thieves. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's the right segue to get back to my mom having this guy over? <laughs> Now, hold hold it for later. All right. <laughs> so while he's locked up, H.H. H. Holmes confesses to 27 murders, but he's suspected of over a couple hundred. Like he admits 27? Are they on his case for a lot? And he, he, or he's just like, all right, 27. He'll tell them. Like, he's going to be hanged anyway. So it's, all right, October 1895. By May of the next year, he's due to be hanged. Okay. So it's like, it, 
It almost doesn't even matter. They're hanging him for the one guy. His, Just his, that. Okay. Yeah. And this is big news. Like, That's this all is they yeah. needed. National news. This guy got caught. And so part of me thinks, if he only like, why only admit to 27 if he did hundreds? You know what I mean? I think he's just like fucking with people. Oh, okay. So and like, he was a pathological yeah, liar. That so, makes sense. You know, because his that number would change too the closer he got to his execution date. Yeah. He would keep upping it? No, it would it would reduce. Uh -huh. and then eventually, I think when twenty dollars. What do you need ten dollars for? <laughs> One of those. By the day of his execution, I think he was only admitting to two murders. Okay. And this was such a massive story, not only because of you know the the gravity or the uh, the extent of of him being such a prominent member of society and also having this murder cast, but also it became a national news story because the three siblings were killed. Okay. Yeah. And it was such a big story that in uh, one of the the sources that I read from, they said that most people they knew the names of the three kids just by their first name. So if some I, I I don't remember the kids' names, but if somebody mentioned like kid one, kid two, and kid three without even saying their last name, they would know who they were referring to. Jesus. When it came time for him to be hanged, he said, uh, "Take your time, don't bungle it." His. The prison he was in was in South Philadelphia, right? William Ensign, yes. Yeah. William Ensign Prison. That is uh, now the site of the Acme that I used to live near. It is. And the brick wall around the backside of that Acme, I believe, is either the wall that was around the prison or the lowest like brick level of the prison. I'm glad you bring this up because when I think of uh, you uh, at backsides and brick walls... <laughs> But fucking insinuation. Yes. And the Acme walking cooler. <laughs> Trying to Kool-Aid that brick wall. But Jake mentioned earlier, he was buried in Holy Cross Cemetery in Yaden, PA. And he was exhumed for DNA purposes in 2015 or 2017. I don't remember. And it seems like they buried his remains in the same spot. So I would like to find out, because it was unmarked, I would like to find out if anybody has any idea where the actual location was. Someone's got to know. What does that say, Jeff? Apparently, that's a picture of him. Whoa. He looks like shit. <laughs> he requested. <laughs> what year was he hanged? Uh, 1896. Oh, he didn't even make it to 1900? No, man. When was the World's Fair going to be? Uh, 1893. Oh, okay. It had okay, already happened. Yeah. Damn, what a dumb fucking piece of shit. But he encrusted. He encrusted. He, he was an uncrustable, yes. <laughs> he requested to be encased in concrete because he knew he was worried about grave robbers, and they granted him that request. Insane that they would spend Nuts, money man. on that. Yeah. So he's he was enclosed in cement right there. Yes. Now I believe that is uh, industry standard. Enclosed in cement, and it's crazy because now we're seeing men on the computer screen, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> been a long day for you huh? it really has been uh, <laughs> dude there, uh, there's there's so many different aspects of this case that really interest me and i really would love to do follow-up stuff but one of the things that i want to get more into is his great great grandson put together a series called american ripper he alleges that hh H. holmes is also jack the ripper because they were alive at the same time and the murders were occurring at roughly the same time was he known to travel to London? He though? would, yeah. He really? Would. Yes, he was in London at one point. Um, Jack the Ripper's murders only occurred over a five-month span, too. So he wouldn't have had to spend a significant yes. extended period of time there. Whoa. That is such an interesting theory. A yeah. five-month or a five -month span, that's insane because... Yeah, I never realized it was that short. He, that's like, I've known Jack the Ripper longer than I've known H.H. Mm -hmm. Holmes. Insane. It's completely like... Pretty nuts, man. How many bodies tight. are accredited to uh, the Ripper? Five. So he killed five women. Okay. I may have the uh, the month span off a little bit, but there, were, there were five victims. I don't but think it is. But also, I'm like, kind of like, that's it? For, for someone as... Uh, as notorious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was just um, go especially out. gruesome. All right, I'm going to look this so, up. Uh, over a period of 12 weeks, so four months, man. Man. Completely feasible. Pretty How interesting. 
think Jeff has a, a picture up of the unmarked grave, too. That's pretty... Is that the headstone or no? Like the spot the next one to next it? I don't think that's his, yeah. Unmarked would be no headstone at all, right? Well, there's nothing on this headstone at all. Okay. From the, the looks of this picture. It's more of a headless stone. Yeah. I would just, you know, sprinkle your piss around <laughs> a bunch of different blank areas <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking to do that kind of thing. Maybe put it in a spray bottle. Piss into the spray bottle oh, into the car. Just miss And then the you'd be like, is this, is this the evil bitch that I wanted to piss on? That's wild. Yeah, pretty interesting guy, man. Yeah, I guess uh, I did know about the fraud stuff, and maybe that's what I confused with the D.B. Cooper name. Oh. Yeah. Fraud, man. God damn, what a good time to be a fraudster. I know, man. What was the one name you, you referenced, Mike? Mr. Wal- Graves. Rob, yeah, well, Rob Graves, but there was Waldo. Waldo, uh, um, something funny. Mudge? No. That was, uh, that was his real name. Herman Mudge, which is the... Waldo Bankhorn. Yes. So just from reading this article, he's in section 15... Lot 41, and there is an unmarked stone, and apparently that's it. So it is, there is a stone, but it is unmarked. doesn't say his name or anything on it. All you piss freaks out there, you can go find it anytime you want. Shake it twice if you're a piss freak. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So where where do you fall in his um, number of victims? You think it, I believe it's, it's actually on the much higher end, like yeah. hundreds, because if yeah. you have that kind of lair set up, especially well, get away with the anything. crematorium is like what they use to uh, cremate bodies, right? Yes. So there's no remains. That's where they make ice cream, and he can easily get. Yeah, that's what I can it's never so remember. Cold crematorium. Yes. <laughs> the amount of times I have gone to a creamery <laughs> to dispose of a dead relative's body. I'm sorry, the cold cre- crematorium. I just call it the stone cold crematorium. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually across the street next to the Wawa. You stand on the Ooh, top Wawa. rope and they throw you two bottles of embalming fluid. <laughs> smash them together. Hmm, maybe I will go to Wawa. Um, yeah, but with that kind of fucking placement, you can get away with anything. And at that, at that time, there was so much hustle and bustle in Chicago. Yeah. Where there was, you know, there was constant construction. There were people coming in for fucking, like fucking, uh, what was the name of that? It was like... Union yards or something where there was like they were trading livestock constantly, so there's there were awful smells around. Okay, so it's like even if like the smell of like what were you doing without the crematorium? Yeah, people probably wouldn't bat an eye because you just they're marching fucking livestock through the streets. So may I ask you this? I'll answer. Of the people of the like, um, like the young women that he had uh, apply to like work at the hotel that he was supposedly making there. Is there reports of like dozens of those kinds of uh, people going missing and never being found? Or did some of these people like interview for the job and then just go, that guy's weird. I'm not going to work there. I don't know. I couldn't give you an accurate number. That's something that I would like to know too in in subsequent episodes. Yeah. Hundreds. I mean, how long did he have that murder castle going? Oh my God. So 1887. Not long, man. It was he was dead less than a decade later. Okay. I wonder. And the place was fucking nine years old by the time it that's burned down. That's a lot of people to just disappear in that area, even if it's yeah, like a hundred people disappearing in yep. that Chicago area within a five year thing. I feel like that's got to be weird and stand out. That is right? a confirmed like a hundred, like a hundred. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know, and I'm not gonna read a book, so. <laughs> I'll read I'll them for you. I'll have to wait for him to do it. I'll do it. I'll live stream while I'm reading this so you can watch me. <laughs> and when I come across the answer, I'll scream it at yeah. the screen. Now, just say, mm, John's going to like this. Mmm, <laughs> John's going to like it this. Yeah, because like, part of me thinks it's like, if, you know, he's national news, he's been caught, he's sensationalized you know, death to have other uh, murders under his belt, yeah. then I could feel like other... Other cases, just throwing cold cases at them to kind of get them off their docket. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I'll tell you one person I never want off of my docket, and that's you. I, that feels uh, insincere, but I'm looking you dead in the eyes as I say this. But yeah, and you just put your mouth on that. Okay, all right. Ooh, he put his mouth right on the docket. <laughs> <laughs> Is it getting hot in here? Yeah, I've had my wife turn on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> Windows wide open. We'll be fine. Oh, Y'all man. ever throw on the gas for a couple hours? It Pull do. your family. It is exciting, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I was just playing with y'all. Y'all, y'all were talking too much. I, I do like taking the batteries out of the carbon monoxide detector every <laughs> again. If everybody's especially annoying, I'll take them out and be like, y'all don't even know. <laughs> we play hide the batteries, the carbon monoxide detector. I don't even believe in carbon monoxide. I think they're just trying to get more money out of us to buy <laughs> fancy ass smoke detectors. Dude, that was a real thing. People used to die from their ovens in the house all the time. I right? don't believe it. I'm a gas denier. Frank Sinatra tried to kill himself by putting his head in an oven. Is that for real? Yeah, it was. It was a very common way, I was told. Really? Yeah. Back in the day, because it was like a, a continuous gas line or something. Uh, so you just put your head in there and just fucking... Get some. You know? <laughs> it does seem like there's still enough fresh air. You can't seal yourself off in there, you know? Coming I in from the other side. That's how Sylvia Plath did it, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people in London did it. Well, they really took that option away from people with the new gas technology, it seems I, like. I would just put a tray of pizza rolls in there. They got a microwave. Oh, pizza rolls. So eventually, your tongue's going to start wandering, and you're going to be like, all right, these are kind of good, and I don't want to die anymore. worth living. At least there's a fresh snack for the first responders, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many times do you think a fresh uh, first responder seen like a plate yeah. of Tostitos and be like... Yeah. They're what just a, like, what a thoughtful <laughs> lady. Oh, boys, my mother killed herself. <laughs> there's also snacks. <laughs> Snack number one. <laughs> man, come quad getting heavy fast. It is, baby. Yeah. Oh man, do you ever picture your asshole looking like uh, Barney's mouth from The Simpsons when he burps? Mike, I try my best not to picture my asshole at all. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a lady look at it? No. Yeah. Jake. Not, no. without, not without a stethoscope around her neck. <laughs> <laughs> like cutting off her fucking airway <laughs> to make her come harder from looking at your asshole or uh, a doctor. My pediatrician was a kinky lady, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you put the tongue depressor in my ass first? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> get cholera after this. Damn, this bitch got a bung depressor. <laughs> <laughs> You think you can taste the grape if they put one in there? Oh, my God. I don't think... I, we can. didn't have flavored tongue depressors. You had flavored tongue depressors? I tried one when I took one of my kids to a pediatrician. Okay, they were new, newfangled technology. And I prayed to God the doctor didn't walk in while I was sucking on it. Oh, so you just, like, out of curiosity, just took one real quick. Oh, yeah, bad boy. Bad boy, yeah. Wow. I, I, don't, I didn't mind the, the, the dry wood taste of a regular tongue depressor. You have to that, of all yeah. things to be flavored, that, yeah, that doesn't taste bad. Yeah, but I don't know. It I, does uh, make you gag, though. Yeah, and grape flavoring is going to stop that. Yeah, I mean, at least you're thinking about the grape flavor and not the uh, the wooden hog in your mouth. <laughs> Was yours not a flat pop sh- sickle <laughs> stick shape? <laughs> Was yours a wooden dildo? Yeah, I would have to say, ah, uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, my elbows are fine. Say when I'm coming. <laughs> Do you guys still keep in touch with your pediatricians? No, I don't even know who my pediatrician was. In what way would that? I don't know. Send a letter, an email? Stop no. in there, pop in? You could, with yeah. With no children, just sit in the sick room? Yeah. Like, doctor in. That would be nice, though. You dress up in an old outfit that you used to wear when you would see him oh when you were eight. Just a fucking big baby Huey. <laughs> you remember diaper. this? Yeah. For my eighth, my, my, my eighth year of life checkup. 
Yeah, I found a picture from that day, and I had the outfit recreated with COVID money. Five thousand dollars down the drain if you don't like this. Like you should be someone who would keep the relationship going with your pediatrician. I would have. I really liked him. Uh, oh no, Doctor Weinberg, if you're out there, I really loved your bedside manner. Doctor Moscow, my dentist, who was in I the was same building, bedside. he was a motherfucker. Bad to be around and bad, even worse to be in the mouth. No, not even. I don't. I don't recall him ever being mad, but he was just an in, being mean. But he was just an intimidating man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to have a gentle presence if you're going to be in boy mouths. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I want a dentist with a slow hand. When's the last time you've been to dentist or doctor? Most recently, dentist. I never go to the doctor. Well, I don't have dental, dental insurance either, but I go a couple times a year to get my teeth cleaned. Yeah, You go uh, a couple times a year? It's, You're falling for that big dentist bullshit? I like it. You do? I like being cared for. you have for. insurance? No. You're paying 300 bucks out of pocket twice it's, a year. It's not 300 bucks. It's you don't like, get the x-rays and shit every time, so it's just a cleaning? No, yeah, he just cleans them. Okay. Under 200? It's one something, yeah. That's not so bad. They fuck me with the x-rays every time I go, and those things hurt. Yeah, I don't know. Number like that, one. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that should be flavored grape. Actually, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, Please. it should be steak flavored. Imagine if they put, like, meatloaf flavoring in your you fucking dental x-rays. cartridges. Well, yeah, and they should have, you should have a Apple Vision Pro on, and there should be a, a Greek lady feeding you fake grapes so you can taste something. No, I want to have a reason something Jake just said. Jake, your mouth is loaded with meat. What difference would a Salisbury steak flavored film cartridge make well if it's accumulating with water and they go to take the x-ray it's going to show a now they got big sucky in there oh they got big sucky i forgot about big sucky i have i truly oh. do have an asian dentist so that's what i have to tell him <laughs> when i give him the extra 80 bucks <laughs> yeah and afterwards when he meets you in the parking lot you ask for a little sucky <laughs> <laughs> he does make me wear women's glasses like i give this guy all the credit in the world he they are the biggest ones though you, Women's glasses they are massive. typically yeah. are massive. And they got like the sides aren't just like, you know how like man's glasses, it's just yeah, like a single like bar. It's like curvy. this. <laughs> <laughs> These are his doctor glasses. Like yeah. The patients? I never complain though because this guy does it all. He doesn't have a receptionist. He does a wig, lipstick, glasses. <laughs> he does it all to me. Come out of there looking like a fucking mutant, but, <laughs> but I like what he does with my mouth, man. <laughs> uh, for one, two hours, you're a pretty girl. Returns you to the world. The only part I don't like, but he doesn't charge extra for, is taping my penis to my asshole. <laughs> hey, take what you can for free, you know? Yeah. Boy, I, I can't wait to go to, like, a real doctor, man. I can't wait to go back to a dermatologist. Yeah, I always say I'm going to, and then I never call, and I just pay for health insurance every year for no reason. Yeah. You have health insurance, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't been to a dermatologist in a long time. Brother. Uh yeah, it's been a minute. I went had some dental work done early this year, and I uh, go to a nice old heart doctor tomorrow. Good. I'm going to surprise him. Yeah. <laughs> you got to know, they have a strong heart. <laughs> a heart strong enough to take care of your heart, you yeah. know? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a fake heart on top of my chest. The boon heart? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does this look normal to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to get that shit again. Uh, open enrollment is November, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Oh, my God. Would you I'm work go for the, the fucking White House or some shit? Bro, I'm going to go to the dermatologist every goddamn week. I got, all right, I'm going to call for dermatologists this week. And every time I do, it's, you know, four years between appointments. So they're like, all right, our next one's like three months from now. Mm. So try to get it in before the end of the year. Yeah. You know? Good move. Just in case those prices go up. What do you like to have done there? Um... I don't even go for anything. I'll just be like, let me get a face wash or something, you know? <laughs> a <Like>. face wash? <laughs> yeah, break out the big sucky. I'm trying to get my face washed. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all wash faces here? <laughs> All right, that's 80 bucks. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take two. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going back to get some skin tags frozen off. And, uh... I'm I'm so like pale and Irish that I feel like I should just get a number of things on me checked. Yes, it's probably the most beneficial thing for me to like 
check my back and be like, is any of this bad looking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to be on the table face down, ass up (laughs) when I ask that. Is this bad looking or does it look good? (laughs) Oh, man. And that's when you look back. (laughs) <laughs> through your legs and they see you wearing a <laughs> they, see you're, they see you're wearing a lipstick and a wig and women's sunglasses and they're like hey you just came from the dentist I see <laughs> oh man god damn I can't wait to go back I only go to the dentist when um, one of my wisdom teeth is coming through mm. have you had them out yet? no I think they're all in mm. I have no idea last time I went was we were on a trip and my tooth hurt I think we were in California. Yeah. We went to the Glendale Galleria Target. That's right. Mm. Back to my old stomping grounds. Oh, boy. If I could be in the Glendale Galleria parking lot right now, walking to the Americana and not have to pay for parking. Oh, oh heaven. Ooh-wee. Yeah, I went to the dentist when I came back from that trip. And uh, was, they do the x-rays and shit, even though they can fucking see them poking through. And they give me a paper to recommend me to a guy who does the surgery and then I lose that paper and then I wait until my teeth hurt again. The cycle of wisdom. I like it. I think I'm going to keep them. They say the main issue is that uh, people can't really get back there with the brush, but I'm getting back there, baby. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Have you named them? Three of them. Wiz, Jizz, Tiz, and Biz. Balthazar. (laughs) Malthazar. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and D'Artagnan. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who are the three wise men uh, in the Bible? What are their names? Frankincense, Myrrh, and Sal? Larry Curley and Myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when Joe quit. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, man. I should, I'm, I'm old enough to get checked for a colonoscopy, too, so I'm going to get that. Yeah. What's the age? 40? I think it's 45. Okay. It's so crazy. I'm going to fucking die of colon cancer at 46. Ugh. All because I couldn't get checked until I'm 45. Oh, baby, I can't wait. I'm going to... Checked out of pocket. What if I say I have butthole problems? Why won't they check me for free? Start yeah. lying about it. Would you go near somebody's asshole who said they were having asshole problems? Swollen valor. <laughs> if it was my job, yeah, I would have to. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think is appreciative protocol? Like, if you go into get your colonoscopy, do you think they like when you pull your cheeks apart so they can really get in there? I don't know. I guess you have to choose a stand. You have to choose a first uh, impression. Yeah. So that could be one. I would be on my back with my ankles behind my head. I think (laughs) standing and uh, head. Breeding him upside down <laughs> through your through your legs <laughs> with your asshole exposed is probably uh, that's got to be a runner up at least. <laughs> Hiya, uh, Doc. Uh, <laughs> you, wait, uh, where'd you get a grape tongue depressor? <laughs> up on the table, uh, like an Asian guy smoking with your asshole hanging off the side. That's a way you can get it mm-hmm. done. As Why well. do you have so many bung depressors in your asshole right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, grape gape. But yeah, man, the the medical field is a strong field. <laughs> You're excited, I can tell. I can't wait about man. your butthole getting played with. I I do. I, I like it all, man. Real nice before you go in, huh? I like it all, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna be. Uh, <laughs> what are you gonna do about your farts that day? Toyed with tinkered, stinkered, oh and fingered. God. If you farted in the person giving you a procedure, yeah, stage. I fogged up the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the colon cam. <laughs> the, the kiss cam. <laughs> There's an engagement happening in there. <laughs> mm. Man. Yeah, come see these polyps. I'm pretty sure they make you fart before you leave. You gotta tell me twice, brother. Like, I'm pretty sure a colonoscopy they put you out for, right? Mm-hmm. You're not awake during it. Is that and true? then, yeah. Yeah, it's like kind of a Man. like procedure. They uh-huh. put you out, and then what, as you're like coming awake before you leave, you have to fart because they like put some up there, and they're like, "Oh, gases and shit can get blocked up in there," so they make you fart. And I've seen like TikToks where people are just like it, like ripping like oh, big ass God long. Heavens. But if you don't have to fart, though, how do they make you fart? You they have to you before up. you leave. Yeah, For they, real, they feed with yeah, you get a hospital jail. Yeah. Oh man, I'll do a bid. 
I ain't farting in public. I ain't farting like that. I hope I have to fart. It's good to know, though, that I have to go and farty. Do you think it benefits you to eat poorly uh, for decades for for um, proper colon health? Or do you think you're more at risk if you follow the rules and try to do everything good? Obviously, there's always the outliers of the people who are spending their lives healthy and doing what they're supposed to do. And then they die of fucking lung cancer after right, man. never smoking a cigarette. But I'm starting to realize that, no, uh, processed fast food my entire life is probably not treating me good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's probably doing something bad to my insides. What is it that you get uh, where they fucking flush hot water out of you? A colonic? Yeah. Yeah, I would kill for one of those. Yes, that is, I think I should definitely get. We should all get it at the same time. Ooh, we should connect our hoses. Jeff, you're a water freak. Why don't you come? (laughs) Pink Juicy Jeff. (laughs) Mudge it. I'll bring the water. Okay. (laughs) He's going to fill his fucking... <laughs> I'll bring a couple of fucking, Yetis. John Wayne uh, had uh, like fucking two pounds or like of uh, beef in his intestines still. What? Like undigested undig- fucking ribeyes. Oh, I thought that was that. Elvis. Really? Didn't well, Elvis, the same like era. he was so like blocked up. They, they say he didn't yeah. like shit for like two weeks and he had like a couple weeks. Oh, really? Like, oh, that would be incredible. Man. Shit like huh. blocked up in him. You're I thought fine. this was just because I think red beef is uh red meat is tough to yeah get through your system and that's the benefit of a colonic. They're gonna find some. And there's no way so John Wayne was getting anything shoved up his cornhole, mm. you know. So many things in my digestive tract that still have the wrapper on it. <laughs> yeah, including McNugget buddies. Yeah, <laughs> still in a box. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of make out the code on the bottom of the box, but unfortunately, it is a Darla. <laughs> Getting some info on... It uh, says four months he was constipated before he died, and that his autopsy revealed a bunch of... Uh, chronic constipation? So that doesn't mean shit? he did not shit for four months, right? That's impossible. You couldn't live for that long without oh. shitting, right? The Fart Break Hotel. <laughs> Does it all just turn to farts? I don't know anything about the body. That's all we all are. That's, yeah, it's like how shit evaporates. Yeah, I don't believe a compacted that stool that was four months old Aww. in in his bowel. Okay, but other okay, so this is other really things passed. Intrusive information that they're just leaking to the press about this guy. Is that is that an English uh, also online a, rag that we're reading? The Mirror. Yes. Also had yeah. a tiny how dare case. they speak of our American heroes? You're looking at the mirror, brother. Me. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Jake, do you have a good relationship with your cardiologist? Oh man, I haven't seen him in two years. Oh my god, are you nervous? I'm pretty nervous. I kept uh, skipping my appointment. Oh, so uh, now I'm seeing his assistant. So I get it. Oh no, my friend zone. passed you on. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, but he's also a licensed cardiologist, right? Yeah, license. he's not like uh, the nurse practitioner of cardiology. That's right? who I'm seeing tomorrow. Was the, the NP. okay? That's all because I uh, skipped about six appointments. Jesus, what the fuck, man! Listen, I thought I could wake up and get there by eight a.m. each time. It's a lot of traffic. You signing up for eight a.m. still? I wasn't really signing. That's what they kept offering me. You take the first offer. They always offer the first appointment of the day. I say, let's work from the last appointment down. That's what I said. <laughs> What's your? Does anybody work past 8 p.m. any day of the week there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a night doctor that works Wednesdays, but he yeah. is the janitor. And he also <laughs> practices voodoo. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I hope you get a scary Haitian tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to be a weird... They have nice fish tanks in there, so that's pretty cool. Oh. Yeah. That's good for the... They have Heart to ask rate? me to leave after you know about three hours. Because you've had your face in there? Yeah. Sir, we've said it a number of times. Stop tapping the glass. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Damn, y'all. Yeah. Jake, you have anything you want to promote, brother? Uh, yeah, man. I, I'm going to be in uh, Indianapolis Friday, uh, Saturday, June 21st and 22nd. So if you're in the area, please come out. It's going to be a fun time. And uh, yeah, let's party. Hell yeah. You, That'll be the day this episode goes public. Oh, nice. Right? 
I think so, yeah. Yeah. Nice, okay. If you're an indie speed over there, get yeah. there, Motor Raceway. And we're, we're all going to be in Texas in August. Oh. Austin on the Thursday the 22nd and Dallas on the 21st. Mm. We're going to try to figure out something for Houston, but we're definitely going to be on those two cities. Yeah, baby. Cooking. Oh. Yeah, check out our shows. Uh, can't wait to go to fucking Texas this summer. And also, uh, I'm putting a new book out. You can pre-order it now at onperks.com. That's O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. Pre-order my new Wigger crime novel entitled, entitled Delco Dirtball. And if you pre-order, you get two very special gifts. You get an invite to come to my movie theater screening of the funniest movie ever made, which is MacGruber. And then the following day, I'm hosting the Rain Train Barbecue here in beautiful Delaware County, Pennsylvania. All that's required of you is for you to come, hang out, have a good time at both of those events. And everybody, absolutely everybody who pre-orders my new book at onperks.com gets an invite to both of those events. Now, there's an added bonus for some people. When does the pre-order end? July 14th is the official release date of my book. So anytime between now and July 14th is the pre-order period. So everybody gets an invite to those two events, but a few lucky people I'm treating to bringing them to Philadelphia, and they're getting some very special experiences. They are getting to go plumbing with my dear friend, Mr. Tubbs, and I, where you'll have the option of plunging toilets and drinking high lifes until you turn blue. <laughs> you can paint with Ryan Shaner, who is a world-class artist. You can paint with him. Uh, you can make prank phone calls with James Moss and Drew Montana of Digital Bazooka. You can hang out in the woods with my dear friend, Chris Woods, of oral presentations. I just called him Chris Woods. <laughs> Yeah, you could fucking hang out with Chris Wood in the Chris Woods of yeah, World his name, his, his name that day. Yes. Yeah. You Chris Woods today. Yep. And also, if you want to, my dear friend Naeem Ali was, was gracious enough to extend this invitation, but Naeem will give you a boxing lesson. So you have all these things to choose from if you get one of the golden prescriptions in your random order. So I'm going to be giving out three of those. Incredible. Yeah. And we're adding shit all the time. Um, yeah, so many people are just offering things now. So you have all this stuff to pick from, but yeah, I'm bringing three people to Philly for that. But more importantly, two people are get or everybody is guaranteed to fucking come to the movie screening of MacGruber and the Rain Train Barbecue the next day, all by pre-ordering my new book at onperks.com. That's going to be one hell of a weekend. I can't wait, man. Two weekends, I guess. MacGruber weekend and barbecue plus the Rainiacs. Oh my God, dude. I, I cannot wait for all this shit. Um, Labor Day weekend, uh, the two boys who won the original Rain Train weekend are coming down. One's coming from Connecticut, one's coming from Winnipeg. Nice. We're going to party all weekend, and uh, yeah, we're going to raise hell. Dude, hell that's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited for all this, and thank you to everybody who's already pre-ordered my book. It really means a lot to me, and uh, I'm trying to put this new genre on the map, which is wigger crime fiction. So I'm trying to establish that. I'm trying to establish myself as the Nicholas Sparks of Wigger crime fiction. <laughs> so please help me get there by ordering a copy of my new book, Doko Dirtball. Um, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for being a patron. It's because you were able to do all the fun shit we do. Uh, we just publicized uh, one of our recent travel episodes. Mm -hmm. So you can see us around Area 51 on the extraterrestrial highway having a blast and just, just acting like guys who blow off cardiologist appointments. <laughs> and there's two more long uh, road trip episodes to become public in the over the summer, and uh, and one more short boy, a little uh, a little short gambler. How long are they? How long are they? Yeah. How long are the long boys? Seventeen, eighteen, just, twenty. Yes. Tell you what, longer than Subway sells them for. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh. Go ahead, Jake. Oh, no, no, go, go, go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say, but, uh, yeah, because of our patrons, we we're able to do that, and we're able to, to keep the show going. And joining our Patreon is the is the quickest and easiest way to support us. You can do so by going to patreon.com slash thinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S for either $4 a month or 40 bucks a year. You get early access to every episode. You get extra episodes. We're doing live streams almost every week which include uh, Stinker News, where we recap the previous month's funniest, most fucked up stories in true crime. Uh, we're doing movie watch-alongs. We're doing book club streams. So much fucking shit. All for patrons, man. So you can join us at patreon.com slash little stinkers. What did you want to say, Jake? 
I was going to ask, but it's probably not the right time. Uh, we never really got into uh, the guy who c- coming to your house. Oh, I'll bring, yeah, I'll talk. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's still a mystery to me. I yeah. just remember his name was Pat, and he had a bow with him. Oh, the guy. That guy. A bow and arrow bow. <laughs> He's saying, yeah, no arrow. Yeah. I don't remember any arrows. We're yeah. looking for you, Pat. Did your mom introduce him as Uncle Pat? No. Uh, Beav was Uncle Beav, but this guy was just Pat. It's time for androgyny. No, it's just Pat. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, we didn't get into Pat. Yeah, we did not. We should always we, forgot about Should it. we take a moment to get into Pat? I'll talk. I'm an open book, baby. This is an ultra Open kumquat. me up, baby. <laughs> like, what do you think Pat was doing? I don't know, man. It's never met him be- ever. What's the best never case met scenario? him. Never knew of him. Best case scenario, I can't think of any. Logically, my mom was probably cheating on my dad. But in your own home with you home, yeah. you really think so? I don't know what. The best case scenario is him sleeping in your sister's bed while she's not there. I know. Like, it's yeah. insane. None of this is comforting. Did this memory just pop back up in your head recently? Or has this just lingered in your... No, I mean, I've yeah. always thought of it. How often do you think of it? <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> it's the first thing I see when I open my eyes. Uh, listen, if you're watching this video, comment under the video with what you think Pat's purpose was. <laughs> At my house that night. Hashtag I'm, Pat's purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to any and all suggestions. And do you think, listen, do you think I should ask my mother? Yes. I think if you do it. it uh, Her health is pretty bad right now. I think now is the time, Mike. It should be a recorded conversation. Yeah. But you should. Just right in her face. <laughs> What the fuck is Pat doing there? With my dad sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you separate them before you ask the question? Would you try to get your dad in the other room? I, if if I asked her, which it's not out of the realm of possibility for me to just flat out ask her. I'm voting ask her. All right. I would not do it with my father. There. Right. Now, one thing... That, that, that bugs me and it's like I, this might be a way to like capitalize on that it's like I found these books at Barnes and Noble which are these uh, these fun books that like help you learn about your parents which is like on this page list three of your favorite memories of growing up mm-hmm. on this page list three jobs that you've had in your lifetime so it's all these on this page tell me what the fuck Pat was doing <laughs> yes. <in her> house. <laughs> Dude. and I gave Dude. them both the books and they didn't get neither one of them gave it back to me so I feel uh, as though man. like Give me something here. And the something I'm asking for is what the fuck was this guy, Pat, doing in our house? Dude. Mike, didn't you say your mom's like a big, like she loves Atlantic City. She's like a big gambler. Yeah. Yeah. You should take her on a trip and like butter her up. (laughs) Well, I was going to say like butter her up, put her in a good mood, and then like see if you can like sneak the question in and maybe she'll be more likely to to answer it. Well, dude, I think a, a very, you know, um, a very vanilla way of uh, broaching the subject would be to like, hey, I remember as a kid like playing with a bow in our living room. Yeah, mm-hmm. whose bow was that, and why was he there? And yeah, why was he wearing my father's clothes? He was not wearing your father's clothes. No, okay. no, <laughs> <That would laughs> he be- was wearing your mother's yeah. clothes. <laughs> He's making Damn. breakfast for me in my mom's nightgown. In that situation, if she uh, <laughs> if she lied to you right then and there, I would that- smother her with my father's pillow. <laughs> well, you you slept on the same floor, right? What do you mean? Your room was on the same floor as uh, yeah, right next to your me. mom's room, your parents' yeah. room. Heard him fucking all the time, man. Yeah, you didn't hear, did you really? You didn't yeah. hear. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear that this night. in his voice. Did you so, hear that? No. Did you really hear them fucking? Yes. <laughs> he went somewhere. Man. Yeah, I didn't hear anything, so I don't know. I think chances it's... are that it wasn't uh, the worst case scenario. Just weird, man. It's Definitely it's, weird. It takes a lot of balls to show up at someone's house with their kid home 
and do that kind of thing. And I don't like. I've never met this guy. A lot now, of balls, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but here's the deal. It's like <laughs> I've spoken at length about uh, Uncle Beef, but at least Uncle Beef was a family friend. Yes. This fucking guy, I don't know from Adam. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. he was like your mom's cousin or something. No. no, she don't be having cousins like that, Jake. I know every damn cousin she had. I think. Uh, I think. You should give us all closure with this. I think this is a very important podcast-wide piece of information that we need from you. uh, Here's the deal. I do have some miniature Coca-Colas in my trunk that I have to bring to my mother. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She loves them sitting in the hot trunk for weeks at a time. I know that. (laughs) (laughs) They're flat. I love a mini can. They're a great uh, portion. Can you clip that, please? <laughs> what? Mini canes you love? <laughs> Butts. I will ask her. Thank right. you. Yeah, so you have to, Mike. I, I just, uh, all right, I got to formulate the precise words so that she doesn't shut mm-hmm. down immediately to really butter this lady up. Yeah, you really do need to have this nailed down before you walk in. Yeah. <laughs> What the fuck was happening <laughs> in our house? <laughs> so I'm walking to her with fistfuls of small sodas. <laughs> Get a bow and arrow and shoot the Coca-Cola cans at her. Oh, man. Who was he? <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> They're not going anywhere because he can't pull it back. He <laughs> keeps falling. <laughs> Why wouldn't he teach me how to do this? <laughs> Supposed to spray spraying all over me. <laughs> the couches were get sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he definitely stayed over. Uh huh. Did you see him in the morning? No. But I explicitly remember my mother saying that he was going to sleep in my sister's room that night. Do you remember your mo- how your mom acted that morning? Was she like whistling and making you eggs? And no, <laughs> no, I don't remember. You know Pat don't <laughs> say the night. That ain't Pat's style. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's a rolling stone, baby. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, yeah, but I did not hear Pat's the lap. Would you be okay not knowing this information for the rest of your life? Now that I'm talking person? about it, like I definitely want to know because yeah. it's such a strange circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's never been an issue where the kids could approach me and be like, hey, who the fuck was that weird person staying the night? Yeah. Yeah. I, aside from my mother in law, I don't know that a person has ever slept in my house when I've had kids. Mm hmm. Do it for us, Mike. I will. Mostly yourself. I will. But. All right, yeah. Also know that this is like the fucking Truman Show ending, dude. <laughs> is he going to get out? <laughs> My God, there's an end? He <laughs> found the end of the ocean? Would you want to find out, John? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You? I think I'd want to find out, but. There'd also be a part of me like, what's it good now? Like, what good is it now? Right. But then never being able to find out would also be. Yeah. Th- like long after they're gone, it would still you know? drive me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I would ask. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll revisit that book thing because I would like to learn other things about my parents. Yeah. And I think uh, that might be the perfect segue for this kind of uh, yeah. gorilla brain invasion that I'm mm-hmm. performing on my mother. What was your favorite television show growing up? And what? <laughs> and what Why the were fuck the... was that guy doing in our house? Why did Pat have condoms? <laughs> he didn't. He was there to... He just... I don't know. Why was he there? I don't know. I'm trying to help. Hey, he's another man. Well, implying that he didn't have condoms isn't helping me. that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jake, now you got me all wet and juicy. <laughs> all right, well, the saga of Pat will continue. It will. I will yes, ask. We all have answers. Thank you guys for all sticking right. 
around and hashtag Pat's purpose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Till next time, everybody. See you guys. <laughs> There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Mail stinkers.